How's it going, Internet? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation. It's time to get creative. It's time to get that imagination all revved up. And it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Bill Sinkovich. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, he's a lovely, lovely cover artist and uh, illustrator. He's worked in comics. Uh, I believe he did some stuff with Marvel and tons of stuff with uh, Batman and uh, Superman in the DC Universe as well. Uh, if you look right over here, there's a great little sketch of his that I thought was really phenomenal. I really like the proportions in here. Uh, you've got like a smaller head and a larger body, but it really works well. And especially I like the way where he chose to do this gun and how you see that there's a little bit of like an animation feel to the gun where you get the nozzle of the guns uh, a little bit bigger and a little exaggerated. You know, we've got that explosion and obviously a little bit uh, violent. But that being said, let's go ahead and look at a couple more. Again, really, um, you know, I'm not I'm not much of a painter. I'm really more into illustration and animation, but uh, I love the color work in here. Um, the way that he can render really light coloring and then go into the darker. So you get the blend of the background into uh, the figures in the foreground is very interesting. His style of painting. Um, again, just some more great work from him. Uh, this one I thought was really cool. I like the more uh, stylized version of Batman in his cape. He's got a really uh, interesting way that he uh, does hands as well. Very kind of claw-ish um, that you can see through a couple of his uh, imagery or uh, images here. Um, this is just another kind of classic Superman pose that he did. I think really wonderfully. Um, really a master of. I believe this is a Game of Thrones style illustration. And then I wanted to kind of end with sharing this one too, um, because I thought this was a, a great layout and great composition here with the uh, chimney kind of sticking up and then the layout was really great. And the long flowing cape and those lines throughout, just overall a really uh, well thought out and uh, well executed image. Uh, with great anatomy, great posing, uh, great composition, great layout. And nice use of coloring overall as well but I want to share a quote with you guys from him and uh, he said uh, and this was a he was asked about um, what he would tell his younger self uh, who is starting out or his advice uh, but I think it applies to all of us as well so he said stay in the moment don't listen to the voices of doubt in your head pay attention to life around you connect with people learn from everyone work on yourself as a person live consciously do that examined life thing. Understand your reasons, your emotions, your motivations, because they'll help you both. They'll help both your work and your life. And I think that's important. Um, we talk about this a lot, about uh, bringing your experiences and your individuality and your uniqueness and the things that you've experienced or that you think or that you dream about or any of that stuff that's, that's uniquely up here in your head and um, try and put that out in your work. And I think uh, another part of this that uh, I think was important is don't listen to the voices of doubt in your head and stay in the moment. And I thought that's very important and a key aspect that, that uh, I know for myself and, and uh, probably most creatives out there. You, you, you're a person who's very, again, I'll speak, I'll speak for myself. Maybe you guys aren't like this. But I think it's a, a thing that resonates with a lot of creative people is that you're very in your head. You know, you're thinking of all these wonderful, cool ideas or um, different uh, creative methods or, or any of that stuff. I know I'm always thinking about stuff like that. But you can get in your head in negative ways too. Of uh, you know, you're not getting enough exposure, or you, you thought this idea was really great and it doesn't seem to resonate with a lot of people. Or and you can get really down about yourself. And it's important to stay in the moment and stay motivated and stay focused and not listen to those voices of doubt, but to just continue to push forward and try and have a, a sense of confidence, but also a sense of awareness of where you are in your journey as well. And to be kind to yourself. Um, you know, if you're still learning, it's okay that you haven't hit it yet. You know, just keep pushing it every day. And that's kind of the, the main goal of these videos as well. So let's go ahead and get into some animation. This is the old school rig it's a free rig that you can grab over at uh, creative crash and i'll throw a link to this along with bill sinkovich's art as well and of course as always if i'm pronouncing anything wrong please comments below let me know so other people uh, can know as well um 
and then what we'll do here if you're not familiar uh, with the videos we give ourselves 48 frames it's two seconds of animation i go off and i find a rig that i've never used before that's a free resource for you guys to play around with as well and we kind of go from there a little bit of over the shoulder hang out with me while i animate a little bit of instruction or guidance or talking through the process as well and the main goal of these videos is to uh encourage you guys and hopefully inspire you guys to go off and to create your own work um, whether it's because you learned something here or we talked about something that uh, sparked some little uh, twist in your imagination to go run with or uh, because you disagree with me or you think the thing that I made you could totally do it better whatever reason it is I just want you guys to continue on your journey and uh, I hope that you're you're doing that each and every day and feel free always down below in the comment section to uh, share anything you guys are creating so I can give you some encouragement and some thumbs up or give you an extra set of eyes or any of that kind of stuff so let's go ahead and get in here and let's start uh, doing some animation um, so if you've been following around for the month of November, I've kind of chose to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're doing Jump November, which is a jump animation every day for the month of November. And today we'll be doing that same thing. But I was thinking for this one, let's um, try and make it a little bit more perilous. This guy seems like he would be, uh, the way that they have the shoes and everything, I feel like it would be cool to have it be like a casual perilous kind of um, reminds me of a little bit of like the dude kind of uh, character from uh, Big Lebowski it's really the kind of vibe I got from this so I thought we could do something that would be a little more perilous so we could um, jump from there to land maybe on one leg and that would be something a little bit different that we could do for our um, jump today so we can keep it a little bit fresh each and every day by approaching it and doing a different jump every day. So let's go ahead and get a more interesting pose to start off with. I do feel like they give you a bit of a better pose with this rig than a lot of rigs. Usually you get kind of that generic T pose kind of a feel. And this one feels like there's already a little bit of character built into just the default pose, which is really nice as well. But let's go ahead and push it and make it unique to us so it's our pose and not uh, the default pose that they give us here. Let's see how they do. Let me differentiate these cogs here. Usually it would be the three for the spine. It looks like this is just the main cog and that's the upper spine. And that's kind of what we get. So that's okay. Usually like to give my characters a little bit of a lean thing. And then let's go ahead and grab the head, go ahead and bring that down a little bit, and let's just look at our center of uh, gravity here. And if you're watching this, I animate, um, put up an interesting article that I forgot to link on my Twitter that was talking about the center of gravity and how that's important in your animation. They had a really great breakdown on that. That's a free um, resource that you guys can check out that I would definitely recommend as well. And if I remember, I'll throw a link in the show notes. If not, just check out uh, the I Animates blog. And there's a great little write-up that they did on that. So definite recommendation. I was just in my head since I was thinking about it, so we want to make sure that we keep a good balanced um, feel to our work as well so let's go ahead and splay that foot out a little bit more like I said they did kind of give us a little better than most default kind of T poses um, so that's really nice and let's do hopefully I did see his fingers but hopefully we get a little bit of yeah get, it's nice to have a rig that has um, finger controllers. I feel like I haven't had a good finger control, uh, good control over fingers for a little while now. So that's nice to have. And let's uh, get a little bit more splay in there. I'm just trying to make a more interesting kind of hand pose here. Okay, 
that's a fairly good starting pose to go off with. Again, we'll probably go about three quarters. That's what I'm thinking for our camera. It's just always good to kind of uh, keep that in consideration when you're going. And let's go ahead and save our file. We are using Autodesk Maya 2014. If you're not familiar with the program, check the description below. And let's set our frame range to 48. Let's go ahead and grab everything. Make sure we just have our nerve curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons selected so we don't key anything we don't need to. And set our first key there at zero. And let's go ahead and go to about 12. flick between those two. Maybe we could even pull this foot back a little bit just to do something a little bit different for our anticipation here. back a little bit I mean, and we can tighten this up as we go but I really want to get a, um, a basic pose pass and a basic timing pass in pretty quick that's usually how I like to approach for myself uh, jumps is to have the basics built in and then go from there and push our posing and push our timing and just continuously uh, tighten up and uh, polish kind of as we go so that's a fairly good so again, we'll just uh, select everything and set a key. Just hit S on your keyboard. And now let's do that uh, up passing position here. It's good to think ahead and to start um, building in your drags and your overlaps and all that stuff in your posing as you're going as well. Let's grab these arms a little bit and the wrist here. Yeah, maybe left and throw it back. I'm going to get a varied pose here. So we still want to get a little bit of variety. Let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and select everything there, set our key, and go ahead and save our file while we're at it.
keep them balanced on one foot here as well. So I'm going to have to push the hips over a little bit more. And let's push that foot so it's there. Back that down. And um, let's, let's go ahead and drag the chest back. what balance we have right now. I'm going to set that and then we'll go a few frames further. And we're going to bring that down and over on this foot. This is going to be kind of a recoil from where we just were. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction kind of idea here. So we're going to push those arms forward. to get in and do a couple more breakdowns and everything to really clean up those paths of action and the way those move, but we're just kind of setting up some uh, basic keys for where we want everything to be here. Bring that forward again. Let's go ahead and um, 
Okay, that's pretty close to the basics of our main keys. Now we just need to uh, clear up those paths of action, lock in our timing a little bit more and our spacing, and I think we'll be good our shot. So let's go ahead and play it at the speed it is with the posing we have now. Okay, basics are there. And this is why you can't let Maya do the animation for you. Even if you put in a couple interesting poses, in the in-betweens and everything, the timing's gonna be muddy, the spacing's gonna be muddy, the weight's gonna be muddy. Uh, so you really have to go in and start locking in and start uh, tweaking the timing and doing all that stuff. So that's what we'll do next. So let's start off with the beginning here. Um, actually, let's start off with our overall timing. Let's watch it again. least two frames from either side of this so let's go window animation editors graph editor and then let's get everything selected here and let's start tweaking with our timing a little bit there might be a little bit of lag here sorry about that is the program freeze up on us one second here okay sorry about that Maya crashed there, and that's why I say it's always good to save multiple versions and save often and well. Uh, if you're thinking of that, let's go ahead and save an alternate version of this file as well. Um, it happens, and uh, it's good. It's a good thing to have, I think, on camera too, so that it kind of solidifies the reasons that I always say on save multiple versions of your file and to save often, so that way, if for some reason one of your files gets corrupt or uh, if something crashes. So you should always be saving and save multiple versions. Okay, so I think we, uh, we're we saving pretty pretty good there. So I think we didn't lose too much there, just our timing. So again, let's go ahead and save our file. And let's go ahead and grab everything. And hopefully this time when we pull up the graph editor, it won't crash. Okay, doesn't look like it. Fingers crossed, let's see if uh, we can do this now. Had a couple of crashes there. So what we want to do is shorten up by about two frames on both sides of that jump. I still think that could probably give about an extra two frames up here. Let's see. Still feels a bit floaty, but I think that's something that we can tweak with our um, posing and our spacing a little bit more. I think the timing's probably about right. Let's see now. Okay, so let's go ahead and save our file and let's start uh, pushing. I think overall the general timing's okay. So let's keep um, this foot planted till about four. Take what we have at 21 and put that at uh, 16. Actually, let's do about 14. Put that at about 6. And we'll lift it up here so we just get a little flicker. It might be a little too high. I'm just a little resettle on the foot. Yeah, it feels like it lifts it too much.
get two more frames. Maybe one more. And let's see, is there a heal raise? There we go. off of that spot. kind of a movement there for the infinity symbol kind of a movement so get that arc arc down so it has another little back arc arc
to worry too much about that enemy just yet. And I still want to get this arc working. This uh, rig does not like to be selected <laughs> and, uh, and then do a focus on everything for sure. So keep getting crashed. So we're going to kind of just approach everything one by one and do a little bit of a different thing today. So let's just take this one here. look at the hips before we move too much further. Down here. 
Smith stuck in my head. Hold on. This is too far forward, so let's bring that one back a little bit more. We want to kind of get a looping circular motion in those hips. go about 65 and a few more frames to get here. Okay, let's track it again. So we got that path going down. should be in about here. And we have a translate X. So a translate Z here should be about there. And then back. Let's go ahead and save our file again and let's look at that foot and we'll readjust that foot. Get those 
this in a little bit more. Let's hold that for a little bit longer. Sorry about that. What's happening here? Sorry about that. Have a little bit of an email notification there. Let's bring that back. Yeah, okay, so I'm working through the beginning, but kind of chunks out.
let's overshoot that a little bit more. It's getting close to that. Holding is probably a little too long, so let's cut one frame from there as well. And that should be pretty close. Yeah.
just a little bit of kind of bouncing that floor. Yeah, it feels like that needs to hit about a frame sooner. rotate in 3D space and not just front and back. Let's go ahead and look at this other foot. We haven't really done too much looking at that one. Let's go ahead and go up a little bit over and then drag it down. And then we'll move that heel back a little bit. Let's go ahead and make the translate Y. Let's pull it up a little bit higher.
so we get some movement in there as well. Let's make those heal pieces a little bit lower. just too much towards the end, so let's tone it down a little bit more. And that one's just too much overall. So let's bring it down a little bit.
Don't know if this is too long to get data, so let's just go ahead and pull it all the way back a little bit more. Just doesn't drag as much so.
beginning of the uh, arms on both sides here. so far today so let's do a little bit on the head and then we'll approach the fingers and I think we'll call it for now. And let's go ahead and uh, we'll drag the head down a little bit. Rotate it up there. Bring it back here. Reach it forward a little bit. Bring it in a little bit. So we'll tone that down a little bit more. Since it is such a big head, any little movements on there feel a little bit bigger. So I can just get a little bit of movement in the fingers there. Then we'll take the index splay and push it uh, forward a frame. The pinky splay and then delay a frame as well. So we get a little bit of uh, variation in our timing with those fingers as well.
let's go ahead and look at the other side from there. through it so we want it continues to get a little bit smaller and smaller and smaller as we go let's do just a little bit in the beginning a little bit of keep on here Spring, we push it uh, forward a frame, and it continues to want to deviate a frame. Okay, and then we'll look at the thumb. Just a little bit of that. And let's start with a little bit of micro movement here. Just so we keep the thumb alive as well. There's a lot of stuff going on, so it's not going to be super noticeable but you want to try to always have a good uh, animating habits so you don't leave things out and I'm just going to drag that back a little more forward there drag it back there go forward there and drag it a bit more okay now let's clean that up a little bit Today. Definitely uh, could spend another hour or so really polishing everything up, but I think that works. Um, so let's take a look back at where we started. We were looking at uh, Bill Sinkovich, and he said, Stay in the moment. Don't listen to the voices of doubt in your head. Pay attention to life around you. Connect with people. Learn from everyone. Work on yourself as a person. Live consciously. Do that examined life thing. Understand your reasons, your emotions, and your motivations. They'll help both your work and your life. I think that's great advice uh, for any aspect of life, but especially for those of us uh, creative people. And uh, if you're watching this, you guys are the creative future, so don't forget that. Uh, thanks for all the likes and subscribes. If you guys uh, learned something new in this one or uh, got uh, excited to go off and try your own thing or disagree or any of that kind of stuff, definitely dump it down in the comments below. Um, 
I love you guys lots. I hope you're continuing each and every day on your journey, your creative future. And with that being said, I think this one's a little bit of a longer one. Sorry for a couple of the little hiccups here. So definitely be careful if you are using this rig um, to not uh, grab everything and do a focus on your graph editor. Hit F on the graph editor because it might freeze up your file. So just a little heads up there. Um, other than that, I um, guess that'll do it for today. So I'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.